Weinberg, and I'm with DFW Runs. We're an active lifestyle marketing agency. We've been working with Sun and Ski Sports to help with the marketing and promotion of the running department, if you will. Uh, we are down here in Houston doing some filming of a, a short training video uh, to help you as an associate recognize the three basic foot types. We've had uh, a few Sun and Ski associates, uh, brave souls if you will, uh, walk away from us, walk towards us, walk next to us uh, as we analyze their gates. And what we're looking for uh, are three different foot types. We're trying to identify a supinator, which is someone who tends to heel strike on the outside and stay along the outside of their foot as they go through their gait. A pronator, which will be about 80% of your customer, which has what we call a, a natural gait. So again, striking on the outside of the heel and towing off towards the inside of their, of their, of their big toe. Generally has a little bit of bend and flex in their arch, but again, that'll be about 80% of your customer. And then what we call a super over pronator or an over pronator who needs some motion control shoes that is a very flat foot and needs a tremendous amount of support. So without further ado, we're going to show you some short videos and offer some training tips on how to fit them in the appropriate type of shoe. And what you're going to see in these videos um, is a great way, some great visuals and some great tips, again, on how to fit a person in the right shoe. Um, and I'll start with, I'm going to start with Jonathan. Jonathan was our supinator. And if you look at your shoe guide in your store, um, Jonathan has a high arch. So when I was watching his video, things to look for are um, his heel strike on the outside of his foot. And then as he goes through his gait, which basically means as he goes from heel to toe, most of his weight and everything is stays on the outside ridge of his toe. So if you're looking at uh, the, the what I would call the, the shadow chart in your store, um, or if he's done the water test at home where he stands in some water, steps on dry pavement, and looks at what his footprint looks like, it will look like this. And the reason for that, uh, with a lot of white space here in what traditionally would be his arch, is that means his, his arch is high and rigid, so it doesn't bend and flex. So he's what we call uh, a, a neutral runner um, and would need a neutral shoe which has high cushioning and little support because his body's natural mechanism of cushioning um, is not there with a high arch. There's no bend and flexibility there. Um, our second candidate, uh, which was Abby, um, Abby is, is probably going to be about 80% of your customer at Sun and Ski that walks in the door. Um, she, again, uh, is going to heel strike on the outside of her toe, um, and she's going to toe off more towards the inside of her, of her big toe. Um, you'll have less white space, which means basically her arch has bent and flexed a little bit more. And again, would, uh, would be fit in uh, a, stability, a stability shoe uh, and things to look forward or to look at in terms of the type of stability shoe um, are her body structure, um, her size and weight. Um, the, if you're a bigger person, you probably need a little bit more stability, although um, you still have a little bit higher of an arch and I would say a medium flex in your arch. Um, our last candidate uh, was Cindy. Um, and Cindy, as you'll see in this video, has a very, very low and flat foot. So if she was to do the water test, um, you would see obviously a very, very low arch, but um, her footprint would be, would be full and would be, would be solid. And basically what that means is um, her arch either has no bend and flex or she has no arch and her foot's com completely on the ground through the entire time through her gait. And in that case, she's gonna need some type of motion control shoe. And I'm gonna use, uh, Jonathan's left foot, just the same way we used Abby's and, and Nacho's left foot. Um, you can tell just, just by looking, he's got a much higher arch uh, than either Abby or, or Nacho did as well. Uh, you can see how, how he's much more aligned from his heel all the way up to his calf and his knee, where Abby and Nacho uh, even started to bend. They started to bend and flex. You can see it coming down um, from their knees down to their, down to their heels. And Abby was the most pronounced, especially on her left foot as well. Uh, I'm guessing all of you are right-handed. Uh, yes. You're right-handed. So. There you go. Um, <laughs> if you look at his right foot, you can even see how. I don't know if you can flip around just a little bit. You can see how even what what would be looked to be if this was the uh, the interior part of his of his foot, he actually pronates out to the right. So that's what we call supination, and you can see that just as he comes down here, and you can see how it, most of the weight collapses down on the exterior of his heel. As we look at the back of Jonathan's foot. Uh, immediately what we see is he stands on the exterior part of his heel. 
So as we watch him walk away, the thing we're going to be watching for is, does, is there a transition from the back of his heel to the front of his toe? And what you'll see in some of the footage here is he does very little of that. So he has a very high rigid arch, which again um, explains why he has so much white space here um, in this poster. So he's a, he's a traditional supinator. Um, and as we watch him kind of walk away, you'll see he stays on the outside of his foot. And so what I'm looking at is he's striking on the outside of his heel and staying on the outside of his foot pretty much all the way through his gait. And if you caught that when he was coming back, he even leaned a little bit to his right. <laughs> like a balance beam. Like these carpet lines. I don't know which one to follow. <laughs> yeah, and just keep your head up when you're going, too. And so watch how his arch is very, very stiff. There's very, very little downward motion in his arch when he comes through his gate. And so that's, again, a telltale sign that he needs lots of cushioning in his shoes because the body's natural cushioning mechanism is a flexible arch. Feel good? I'm good. So with Abby, uh, you can tell immediately after she's taken off her shoes that her left foot uh, overpronates more than her right foot. You can see how um, in her heel you've got more flexibility and how this rolls right in. Um, and we're definitely going to look for a shoe that has some posting more towards the back. And then what we're going to watch for when she walks is uh, how, that pronation, how that pronation rolls through her gait from heel to toe. And that will help us determine how much, more, how much more support she needs in her shoe. Uh, the other thing to notice is because her left foot is so much flatter than her right foot, her left foot might be a little bit longer than her right foot. So we'll, we definitely need to measure her. So as we're looking at Abby's foot, uh, what you'll notice, or what you've noticed from kind of watching from behind and the angle that we're at, um, is even before Abby walks away from us, or as we start to do our gait analysis and just looking at, um, at her feet kind of from behind, um, you notice that she has a lot of bend and flex, or a lot of bend and flex towards the back of her heel. So as she walks away, what we're going to watch for is does that flexibility continue? Uh, throughout her stride or throughout her gait, if you will, as she goes from heel to toe. And what you'll notice in probably 80% of your customers is this is the most common type of foot that you'll see that has needs a good balance of support and cushioning. And Abby's a great, uh, is a great example of that. Um, so Abby, if you want to go ahead and walk straight away from us. Come on back. And again, what we're watching for is just flexibility in her arch, looking for her right foot as well to see how that, how much flex she has there. And, and she definitely has flex in her arch. And just as important to watch um, your customers walk away from us, we definitely want to look from the side as well because that'll tell us a little bit even more about the flexibility of the arch. So, Abby, if you want to go ahead and walk, and we're just going to follow alongside of you. And we're looking at her right foot too, and you can see um, from heel to toe, even after she toes off, you got a little bit more flexibility. So I'm going to get a couple for 50, so And look back at her left foot too, which again is the flatter foot of the two. And you can certainly see that flexibility and how she rolls, especially in the back of her heel. Cindy, do you have kids? Did you notice your feet flatten out after you had kids? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. It's always been flat. Okay. Um, so with Cindy, you can tell um, she has very, very flat feet, uh, very, very little arch, um, you know, underneath her, or basically her entire foot is is on the ground. And as we were watching her walk as well, uh, she walked a little bit what we call duck-footed, which means um, her front toes are pointing out and away from each other. Um, and we were, as we were watching Cindy walk, you can tell, even, even as she's standing, her front toes are pointing out opposite directions of each other. Uh, and that's a real telltale sign that she's going to need some support in her shoes. Um, again, flat foot, her arch is basically uh, a collapse. You can really, really tell in her left foot versus her right foot. Um, her foot 
pretty much the entire bottom of her foot's on the ground. So she would definitely be a candidate for uh, something with a lot of support, a motion control shoe um, that again helps kind of shift her, shift her gait and her balance back up um, and uh, put her in line with her knees and her back and her spine as well. Um, as we look at Cindy's feet, uh, the thing that we notice right away is she has an extremely low arch, if there's even an arch there at all. Uh, so basically, as we're kind of looking behind, um, you can see that her arch is, is almost all the way on the ground. So when, she, when we go through her gait analysis, you're probably even going to notice um, that her big toes point outward on both her right and her left foot. And that's what we call um, a duck foot, if you will. Um, and she rolls completely in uh, as she's going through her gait and stays on her arch. So she needs a tremendous amount of support, again, to kind of push, push her arch up, give her a little bit more support, and bring her back in line uh, with her knees and her spine and her back. So Cindy would be a classic motion control shoe. All right, Cindy, go ahead, yeah. So with Cindy, you can tell, um, very, very flat foot, so she would need a lot of support in a running shoe. Her arch basically is on the ground and has, has no flexibility. It's flat without even, without even a natural curve anymore. Let me do it one more time, one more lap. And Cindy, on your left foot, did you, did you break, your, break your ankle or anything like that? No. So Cindy would be a great candidate for a Brooks Ariel. Perfect. And, and unlike Jonathan, what you can see in, in Cindy's gait is Jonathan was a little bit pigeon-toed, meaning as he walked, his two front toes were pointed towards each other. And with Cindy, um, the common term is kind of duck-footed. Um, her t big toes are pointing out direction, out opposite directions. And that's always a telltale sign that she's going to need some, a lot of support in her shoes. Another critical component in, in fitting your customers is learning about your customer. Today, down in Houston, uh, we were doing the gait analysis for Nacho. Uh, and Nacho has been a rock climber for a number of years, uh, has recently taken up running. He's completed some 5Ks and 10Ks, uh, has also completed a half marathon, and is now on his way to a full marathon. Um, now, Nacho's had some difficulty in trying to find the right shoe. Um, and what we've learned from him is a couple of different things. Number one, in just looking at his foot and then listening to what he's training, uh, training for and how he's training, he doesn't necessarily fit into our three general categories or general foot types, meaning a supinator, a pronator, or someone who needs a motion control shoe. Um, Nacho is transitioning from a hobby in rock climbing where he uses his feet a lot uh, and almost uses his feet as hands. So um, as we watch him, he when he goes through his gait analysis, uh, his toes kind of clench up and he, and he claws at the ground, if you will, a little bit, um, as well as he's trying to change his gait so he's more of a four-foot striker. And then lastly, what I noticed in looking at his feet is he has a, a wide forefoot and a really narrow heel. So listening to all of that, again, I need to put him in a comfortable shoe that has a wide toe box, that has a narrow ankle, and then I got to think of ways that, um, or look for a shoe that's got good, good cushioning in the forefoot uh, for him as he's trying to train to become more of a forefoot striker as opposed to a general heel striker. So things that we learn from him um, are, are fantastic, uh, and there's some techniques that we can use no matter what shoe we put him in uh, that are going to make him feel very, very comfortable in whatever shoe he, do he ultimately chooses as what is the best for him. Yeah, I ran. I was running a neutral shoe, Good. and I had chin splint issues, and um, I've been working on stride and form lately. Gotcha. Because I just I started running private three years ago, and I just increased mileage a lot this past year. Okay. And do you notice um, when you run if you curl your toes up? Yes. So okay. I curl them up from climbing. Right. Okay. Uh, rock climbing, I turn my my feet into as I know when I start to want to pull and push. More, uh huh. I am starting to want to do this. You're digging in a little bit because all the climbing shoes I wear are downturn style shoe. Right. So they want that my toes to be this pull. Okay. So and that's where I'm finding out that I have blisters on the sometimes the bottom. Pull. Okay. Because I'm trying to pull. I'm having some 
Copy for any of it. Okay. And as the uh, is this been your run, primary your running That's been shoe? That's my primary shoe. Okay. Um, I'm running all the shoes I'm running. In are, I'm rotating between. Um, like your numbers. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> yeah. So that's the first pair. Those are my oldest. Um, and then I have another newer pair version. And then I'm also running in the support version of that shoe for a race shoe. Okay. So the biggest thing that I'm changing is trying to change to a midfoot strike. Gotcha. Okay. Which has been an experience. And again, continuing from from the side, you can actually see, or I can see on on his right foot, he's definitely walking a little bit more on his toe. So things we want to make sure we're cognizant of is we have good midfoot cushioning in a shoe when we place him in the right shoe. So with Nacho, um, actually stand up a bunch so we can get that lace out from underneath there. So with Nacho, what we were noticing is um, in his foot, he has a, a, wide, uh, a wider forefoot and a more narrow heel. And one of the issues that we, that we try to overcome uh, for folks like this is um, when we upsize them in the shoe, the customer's heel will tend to slip. So a little trick in lacing the shoes is uh, something called the runner's loop. And it's, uh, it's the often overlooked eyelet in the very, very back. So when you lace the shoe, you come up to almost that last one, except rather than cross to get back to that eyelet, you go straight back. Like so, and that creates a loop. And doing the same on this side creates a loop. If you're feeding kids, you can call them bunny ears because they like that. And then what you do is you take the lace and you go through the loop on either side. And that's when you're crossing the laces. And then when you pull the laces taut, you can kind of see how that pulls his heel into the, or pulls the shoe into the heel. Again, to help alleviate that slippage in the back of the foot. Like so. My name is Eric Lindberg and I'm with DFW Runs. We're an active lifestyle marketing agency that's working with Sun and Ski Sports to help develop some promotional campaigns as well as get you trained uh, to better help and grow the running business within Sun and Ski Sports. Today we were down here filming gait analysis uh, and putting together a small curriculum or a short curriculum for you as an associate uh, to learn from and help to better, better, better identify the running customer that's coming into your stores. Thanks again for your time. I hope you took great notes because when we're done here, you're going to have a little bit of a quiz. Thanks again and have a great day.